Hi, how are you? This is Anthony from Cypher House Escape. It's been a while since I last posted a video, but I'm back with some more puzzles. This past weekend, Princeton put on their very own puzzle hunt, and I completely missed it. So I'm here to try to work through some of the puzzles that they have in store here. I haven't looked at any of the puzzle hunt yet, uh, but I see that it was intended to take place over four hours, probably with a small team of players. So I'm not sure how short these puzzles will be, how long it'll take me to get through the whole set, but uh, I'm excited to give it a try. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the team behind the Princeton Puzzle Hunt of 2020. They're here on the screen now. I'm excited to see what this group has put together. So without further ado, let's take a look at the hunt. There has been a murder in Puzzle Manor. Interview everyone who was in the house that night and visit all of the manor's rooms. If you can collect enough clues, you will be able to find the location of the body and solve the mystery. Make sure your answer is precisely correct before hitting submit. So we got a couple of hints here as well as the solutions for the puzzles. I'm not going to be clicking on those unless I have to for some puzzle. Um, and then what do we have? Suspects. The suspects below tell you that if you can solve their puzzles, the answers will clue you towards which room they were in. Puzzle titles are links to PDFs. Okay, so these are our suspects. Is this like clue? We have seven characters here that are all different colors, and each has one or two puzzles below them. A couple characters have two. Then what do we have? Ah, this is like Clue. Rooms. Inspect all of the rooms in Puzzle Manor, and you may be rewarded with a piece of evidence found in each room. You may click on the map or click the puzzle titles in the sub submission area below. Okay, so each room has a puzzle associated with it, and, mo and the characters all have puzzles associated with them. And then we have the meta puzzle down here. So, I guess I'm just going to start at the top of the list here with... The red suspects puzzles. We'll start with um, transformations. Transformations. There are moments that transform us from one thing to another thing, even if we don't realize it at the start. So we have a list of something. Um, end of the road, 1999 to 2000. So that could be Y2K. I don't know if it's hinting at that or not. Sunday Bloody Sunday. Money Forms. C3PO. And R2-D2. Right? From Star Wars. The full dictionary. Water. Water's H2O. Oh, okay, okay. So I think these all have the form letter number letter. If I'm, if I'm reading this correctly. I'm opening up an Excel sheet here to help keep track of some of the data that I collect in this puzzle. Okay, so we have a clue, and then we have something in the pattern of letter, number, letter. End of the road. Um, I don't know what end of the road is hinting at yet. 1999 to 2000 is Y2K. Sunday, Bloody Sunday. I don't know what that one is immediately either. Money forms. Um, maybe something for taxes? Or... Hmm, not sure there either. C3PO and... is R2-D2. The full dictionary. Water. Water's H2O. Okay, so we're going to need to put in a little bit of work to figure out what these clues are all hinting at. But then we also have this down here. Um, does the number match up? We have seven clues. And we only have six sets of blanks to fill in down here. So that's confusing. Oh, 
um, I think I have an idea of what's going on here. It looks like these might all have two in the middle of them, specifically. These could each be giving us a cryptogram key. So, yeah, maybe these, I, I think these all are going to come together to help us come up with a cryptogram key to decode what these are saying at the bottom. So, like, I think Y2K is telling us that everywhere we see a Y, we replace it with a K. And similarly, if we were to see a K anywhere, we'd replace it with a Y. I think that's what it's saying. And so I'm going to put the letters that we haven't used yet over here. And then down here, I'm going to work on decoding these words as we go. Okay, so Y's and K's. This Y goes to a K. This Y goes to a K. This Y goes to a K. And then we have R's and D's. There's only one. <laughs> only one of those. And then we have H's and O's. Okay, I think I got all of our current letter swaps. Uh, I might have missed something, but let's keep going with some of these letter to letter things and see if we can identify any more of those. Ah, the full dictionary could be A to Z. Yeah. And so, wherever we see an A or a Z out here, we have to swap them. I gotta say, so far, these aren't looking a lot like words. I guess this could be like ozone layer? I don't know. This could be snooze, snooze button, money forms. What are the money? I should know the money forms. Ah, W2s. Yeah, that makes sense. Where do we have W and S? Here. So this really could be snooze. If this is snooze, that means that the E is left unchanged. So I wonder if we're only going to be changing, same with the N actually. So I wonder if we're only changing letters that will have a, a pairing up here, and if that tells us that like N and E aren't going to be used up here at all. That's, that's possible. Yeah, N and E wouldn't be changed down here either if this was ozone. Okay, uh, Sunday Bloody Sunday. What is that? Okay, it looks like Sunday Bloody Sunday is a U2 song. Um, but what are we changing U2 to? <laughs> okay, I think I get it. So Sunday Bloody Sunday is a U2 song. But, I, I couldn't figure out what U2 what. I think I get it now. I think it's just U2, nothing. Not a blank, but but nothing. I, I think it's just U2. Which seems like weird, a weird thing. Let me put a dash in there. But, down here for this one, I was thinking, wow, this looks a lot like it's going to be Baker's Dozen. But there's this U in front of Baker's Dozen, so I think what this is telling us is to just get rid of the U completely in this transformation that we're doing. I think that's what we're doing here. So everywhere I see a U, I'm just going to completely get rid of it. Which is just those two places. Okay, I'm pretty sure that E and N are going to remain unchanged, so I'm going to delete them from there, because we have a lot of E's and N's everywhere in here. Um, and they make... They make words. We have dozen. We have snooze up here. Um, I'm pretty sure those ones are staying as is. Yeah, ozone. I'm also wondering if maybe I wasn't supposed to take these transformations backwards. Um, it seems kind of weird. So like something like this, I switched, I basically switched the O and the H. But... 
this isn't really looking like a word. Um, at least I'm not seeing a word that I could make out of this. So I'm wondering if maybe the O was supposed to stay an O and I was only supposed to turn the H to an O because we have H2O. Okay, I'm gonna start putting in my answers to some of these. It's snooze button for sure. Ozone layer and most likely baker's dozen. Oh, end of the road is a boys to men song. So B2M. So if I change B's to M, this is an M. The C in, in this stays the same. Sock puppet? I think it's sock puppet. I feel like I'm missing something with these two translations. They both involve letters that are on the right side of our transformation. Oh my gosh, I just figured it out. <laughs> oh, I've been staring at this, wondering why these two didn't make sense. It's because I abbreviated this last one. It is a song by Boys to Men. Right, uh, so this isn't B2M, it's Boys, B-O-Y-Z two men okay so these transformations are more complex than i had initially given them credit for both with the you going to nothing and also completely changing the string like b-o-y-z goes to men that's why I'm having so much trouble making a six letter word from this. It's because it's not a six letter word. So the H goes to an O, B-O-Y-Z goes to men, and then W goes to S. So blank omens, maybe bad. And then down here we have C stays as it is, H goes to O, I think M stays as it is, and then we have boys going to men and t stays as it is so comment comment section seems to be one of the only things that's coming up okay so that feels pretty good now the question is what do i do with these oh i see so if i was putting them on these blanks over here I would just read down where the arrow's pointing, I think. So I get a letter from each. It's B, U, T, T, E, R. Butter. I think that's the final answer for this puzzle. Okay, now that we've solved the first red puzzle, it's time to go on to the second just for kids. Remember back when you actually got excited about winning Candyland? Pretty good times. An alternative name for Clifford or a childhood game. Clifford's the big red dog. Childhood game? Hmm. An alternative name for the Wiggles and they may be giants or a colorful fad you wear on your wrists. Interesting. I'm not sure immediately what we're going for here. Um, I'm probably gonna have to do some research on a few of these things to figure out what is going on. An alternative name for the place in your jeans where you might stash Jafar's pet. We also have this image down here which is probably going to play a role somewhere let me zoom real far in to see this image a little better what do we have here we have light bright with a boat some watercolors bunch of playing cards what is this pole some kind of toy, I think. Or maybe a craft supply? I'm not really sure what that is. 
Scissors. Um, oh. Okay, there's seven... Seven rows highlighted in gray here. Are there seven of these? There are. So I'm guessing our answers are going to go in here. So let me try to copy this down into my Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so I've recreated this grid for the answers as well as I could in an Excel spreadsheet, including the yellow letters that I'm guessing is going to spell out our final answer. Now, I think the order is going to be the same as the order that these clues are given to us in, because otherwise there's, there's these two at the bottom that are the same length, and there'd be no way to know which answer goes in which spot unless they go in the order that's given. Um, what sent Dorothy to Oz was a tornado, which does fit in this blank, or a semi-acrobatic board game? Oh, a twister. Okay, so I'm thinking twister goes down here. Okay, so that's one answer down. <laughs> An alternative name for Scabbers. Is that Scabbers from Harry Potter? Where to slip a shrimp? Where to slip a shrimp? Okay, let's see if we can figure out what Vierst's Alexander is. Okay, so Judith Vierst is an author, a writer who wrote the Alexander series, including Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. I remember that book. I read that book as a kid. Alexander resolves that he is going to move away to Australia forever. So is that the favored country of Alexander? So where to slip a shrimp in Australia? Where to slip a shrimp? What does that even mean? Where to slip a shrimp. Oh, on the Barbie? Shrimp on... Shrimp on the Barbie. That's what you do with shrimp when you're in Australia. Wow, that clue had quite a few steps. And that's a famous Mattel product. Okay, so Barbie is answer number five. Okay, so we have two letters here. One thing that I'm going to do is try to use one look to see if we can get the answer a little faster. Because I have a feeling that uh, some of these are going to be harder than others to figure out. So we have the E at the end of our word reduces the number of options and then we have an I here which reduces them even more still a lot of possible options so we're going to need a few more letters before this comes in handy colorful fad you wear on your wrists were those live strong bracelets so live strong fits colorful fad they may be giants it could also be there were those animal bracelets the kids were wearing on their wrists for a while. A history of teen bracelet crazes. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Friendship bracelets. Lanyards. Slap bracelets. I remember these. These were from when I was a kid. Power bracelets, jelly bracelets. Live strong. See, live strong was what I thought it was. Silly bands. Were these the ones that looked like animals? Yeah, these are the ones that looked like animals. Silly bands. Wait, silly bands are the Wiggles and they may be giants, silly bands by any chance. Known for their unique experimental and absurdist style of alternative music, typically utilizing surreal humorous lyrics. Excellent. Okay, I'm, I'm going with silly bands. 
I think that's one of the more recent child bracelet uh, fads in 2010s. And it seems to really accurately describe the second definition here. So going with silly... Bands. Another vowel. Vowels don't help us narrow down the possible solution space all that much. We still have quite a few possible options for the answer, so we have to keep going. Okay, so now that I know these could be like... These are all plays on words, it seems like. So... Tiny toy line sold by Bluebird Toys and later by Mattel. I'm guessing it's Pocket something. Like maybe Pocket Cage or Pocket People. Ah, Polly Pocket. Bluebird Toys and later Mattel sold Polly Pocket. Which makes sense, because Iago was the parrot. So Jafar's pet parrot refers to Polly and the place in your jeans is the pocket. Okay, so we have Polly Pocket, and we get a P for that one. Okay, that reduced the number of answers that we have. Uh, there's still a few higher up answers, and since I don't think there's an answer checker for this um, puzzle, I think I need to go further to be sure. So we need a six-letter animated 2000s show. Um, which is also an alternative name for Scabbers and Templeton on the carpet. Was Templeton a mouse or a rat? Okay, Templeton is a rat and so is Scabbers. So I'm guessing rat is somewhere in this answer. Rugrats on the carpet. Rugrats. Rugrats was a 2000 animated kids show, so Rugrats is going to be our answer for number six. And so that gives us the R here, which means vampire is looking more and more likely. Let's see if there are many other answers here. There aren't a lot of other good answers at this point. We can see if we can find these other two, though, just to be absolutely sure Vampire's correct. I still don't know the alternative name for Clifford. Childhood game. Red Rover. Okay, I got that one because I was thinking about the V going here in this yellow spot, um, as well as Clifford being a big red dog. Red Rover. That means an M probably goes here. I admit I've been kind of avoiding this clue because it's one of the longer ones and I understand very little of what it's saying. <laughs> um, but let's see, a, a book by Margaret Wise Brown. That should be easy enough to find, assuming it's just, that that's literally just the author's name. <laughs> Goodnight Moon? Goodnight Moon fits. Okay, that's a very popular kid's book. Um, what Sokka might say to Yue before going to sleep. That's an Avatar The Last Airbender reference. <laughs> Which is such a coincidence because I'm watching Avatar right now. Uh, Sokka's a character and Yue is a moon spirit character also in that show. Um, so good night, moon. Wow. Good night, moon. Okay, so vampire is our final answer here. Now, according to this, the suspects below tell you that if you can solve their puzzles, the answers will clue you towards which room they were in. So, we have two answers for red, and they're butter and vampire. And that's supposed to tell me which of these rooms the red character was in? I just noticed these rooms have letters in them. I don't know how well how easy it is to see that. Um, I think the G down here might be pretty easy to see, as well as, like, this F. But every room has a couple of letters. That might be part of the meta puzzle. But for now, I think I'm going to end the video there. These puzzles seem short enough that I think I'm going to try to do two puzzles per video. So thanks again to the team that put together the Princeton Puzzle Hunt. It seems really fun so far. I'm looking forward to tackling the rest of it. Thanks for watching.
And as always, happy escaping. <laughs>